Hello and welcome, <clears throat> excuse me, welcome back to another episode of Tiny Zoo, our new compact zoo uh, with a slightly different philosophy to my other zoos. Uh, creative, creativeness is the key and uh, you know using uh, lots of custom fencing and custom uh, pathways and things like that. Um, so yes, uh, we're going to move on today to another habitat. Uh, in the last episode, I built this red panda habitat in the corner here. Uh, I think it came out quite nicely. I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, but today I'm going to be working in this space here. Um, and I've decided that I'm going to continue with this small animal theme for now. I don't know if this zoo will ever get any larger animals in. At the moment I'm going to stick to doing all the small ones. And I'm going to put some of the doll sheep in here. Uh, I've got an idea for a, a design that I want to try out. So that is my plan for today. Um, so let me go away and um, get on with a bit of building and uh, I'll get back to you once I've got a bit more of the uh, the design down and uh, I can explain exactly what it is that I'm hoping to achieve. So bear with me and I'll be right back. Okay we have sheep as you can see aren't they cool? Lovely little things. Uh, I have six of them in here I think three three male three female I believe and you can see I've got my basic structure in shape here now. Um, so I wanted to use a different type of rock. I've, I, I usually end up using a lot of the grey rock or the mossy rock and so I wanted to do something a bit different in here. Um, and these sheep are, they're, you know, they're very good climbers. Uh, sheep and goats, they may not look the most coordinated of animals but actually most of them are very good at clambering up rocks. I mean some of the, uh, some goats that live in places like the Himalayas, they they climb up and down sheer cliff faces. It's It's really quite remarkable how uh, how incredibly balanced they are um, and so obviously I'm not doing anything quite like that but I just I wanted to use rock as their main uh, the main feature in their enclosure here so you can see I've I've just laid it up with this um, the, the large rock here just creating a, a gradual slope up to the top where I've built this uh, this shelter for them so that is going to provide them with enough cover under here and I will put some bedding down under there as well. Uh, giving them a small rock pool in the corner here as well just so they can dive in there and get some water. Uh, now I've done another custom fence around the pen here which I, I kind of like. It's nice and simple but it's exactly uh, it's exactly what I needed. It's, it's you know it's, they don't need lots of uh, secure barriers. They're only sheep. They're not uh, particularly strong. They're not going to be trying to escape. Um, so a nice simple wooden fence along there. I've kept it back from the pathway here um, mainly because I want to I really want to get a lot of foliage in this zoo because it will really help with that sense of it being quite a, a small enclosed space. So all along here I'm going to create um, sort of a, 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 fen a fence of hedging um, to separate the guests from the enclosure, um, because I mean, you you could let the uh, you could let the sheep right up here because the, you know sheep don't hurt, they don't bite, um, so you, you, it could easily be like a, a, a petting zoo almost here where you could let the people actually stroke the animals. Um, certainly, all the wildlife parks that I visit, you can you can you can sometimes walk into the pens with the sheep and the uh, the goats. Um, but that's not what I wanted to do here. I wanted uh, I wanted some foliage around the outside, so I will do that. Uh, I have put this large building in the back here. I, I decided, as much as I don't want to have to have staff paths everywhere, I think it's inevitable that I'm going to have to have most of the zoo linked uh, with um, with staff pathing. pathing. And then I'm just going to have to focus on my creative fake pathing for just um, sort of viewing areas and uh, extra pathways that aren't real uh, but look good. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. 
because inevitably if I want the animals actually in the zoo I'm going to have to have lots of staff walking around looking after them and they're going to have to have access and everything's going to have to be linked otherwise I'm going to have to keep on moving things around like the trade centre is going to have to be moved from place to place depending on where the animal is that I'm trying to get into the zoo um, and it's all going to be a bit awkward so I decided to just build this large building at the back here and plonk most of the buildings in here that I will need long term and obviously I will decorate that you've got the entrance to the enclosure in the back here as well um, so yes yeah, so that's where I'm up to now so there's a lot more work to do lots of uh, lots of foliage basically is going to go in obviously I need to decorate this at the back here um, so let me go away now and do a bit more work and I will be right back right then lots of foliage gone in um, I decided to use the umbrella tree here um, I love these they look fantastic and they they really they really suit the look of what I want so it's quite narrow at the at the base so you can you can see what's going on underneath the tree but it gives a really nice bit of canopy um, so one of those in the middle here just up growing up on one of these rocks really like that um, and then just lots of general foliage I found all my favorite um, shrubs that I like to use now so I'm I'm kind of sticking to them all around uh, the whole enclosure I love these these tall ones what are these the uh, poly polylepis trees I think they look really nice um, I like these ones just sunk in as well the uh, the arrow what are these arrow something arrow arrowwood bush look really nice just sunk into the rocks like they're growing out of the uh, the crevices in the rocks looks really nice um, so yeah keep it in quite dense um, I think again all these enclosures I want them all looking quite overgrown like they've been there a while they're very established um, and uh, obviously while maintaining enough space for the animals to actually get around um, but I don't want them to be too too open and empty I want them to be quite nice and bushy and full up and that that will apply to all of the enclosures that I do here um, so the back here I um, I've gone with my my usual technique here of covering up the um, covering up the building with these fake rocks I think that looks really nice um, found a nice door that you can sink in quite well and you can recolor this door as well so it kind of blends in a bit um, with uh, with the rocks so that's uh, that's cool a um, little bit of foliage down in the pool there as well uh, so I think that's coming along really nicely I'm pretty happy with it so far still got a lot of work to do around the outside here oh you can see I put a curb here as well on the side of this pathway uh, I thought that made sense I think I think where you where, where you have a pathway like this I think it makes sense to have a curb especially if you've got plants behind it it would stop all the soil getting brushed out onto the path and it also tells your uh, your public this is it this is the end you know do not cross this point um, it's kind of a it's a barrier but low down so it's uh, you know it, it serves the same purpose as a as a fence so I need to work on that I need to do lots of uh, foliage around the outside here and obviously I still need to do a lot of work on this building as well um, but I'm really happy with how that's coming along so far I like uh, I really like this the big tree I'm going to be using these umbrella trees quite a lot I think in this park um, I just think they uh, they really they really look very nice and I'm not uh, I'm not really basing this park in any particular country so I'm, I'm mixing up the foliage I'm going with uh, with whatever I think looks best uh, even if uh, even if the trees wouldn't all grow in the same environment um, I just uh, I don't care in this park it's uh, it's not an overly realistic park um, I'm really just going for the aesthetics um, yeah so that's my uh, that's my philosophy and I'm sticking to it right then so let me go away again and uh, and do some more work on the foliage and uh, and the building at the back and then I will return and show you what I've done and here we are with I think my finished habitat I'm really happy with it actually and uh, hopefully the sheep are too so you can see I've gone along uh, around the outside here and I've, I've, I've used a nice mix of different bushes all along the outside. Try to keep them fairly low so you can still see into the enclosure and you can 
clearly see the fence because I think the, the fence looks really nice there um, so yeah try to keep it down particularly here so you can clearly see into the water and obviously this is their main area where they sleep up here you can see I've put some uh, some bedding up in here as well um, so I didn't want to block the view at all from here uh, so you can see quite clearly into the enclosure there um, put all the way along the front obviously just got some benches and bins down as well just really mixing it up I think it looks really nice actually the blend of different shrubs all put together around the outside here got the um, enrichment items inside uh, they're all usable so you've got the, uh, the food barrel up there you've got the dangling one here which I really like being on this corner and uh, the sheep can actually get to that and use it so that's nice uh, I decided to put them a small water trough back here as well just as an extra source of water um, rather than having to go swimming continued this foliage all the way up here got a couple of larger ones just at the back here just to really shelter this corner for the uh, the animals to hide in if they want to um, so yeah that's that's the enclosure kind of done there now um, very happy with how it's turned out actually I, I think it uh, well look see I love these little things they, they pick them up and carry them around really nice I love the uh, the animations for these little uh, what are they called carry balls I don't know the goats love them uh, the, sorry the sheep love them so um, yeah it's great great to see right um, so what I've also done as you can see is this building I'm not 100% finished with it just yet um, but what I've done I've, I've gone with quite a large flat roof I didn't want it to be too tall and so uh, just pretty basic design on the roof there continued the rock theming around the outside obviously put a, uh, a another door in the side here uh, I'm actually going to get rid of these little ferns that I put I don't like them so they will disappear in a minute I've uh, gone with ivy up on the top. I, I want to just, just hide this uh, this large area of concrete a bit. Um, so I've gone with a load of this ivy up here. And again, I've kind of tried to bring bits forward to make it look a bit more 3D, like it's actually growing outwards uh, and then not completely flat. So again, here on the rocks, just bring some of these forwards and it makes it really look like they're hanging down in front of the rocks. Makes it just look that a little bit more realistic. And then I've gone with some fake benches along the front here because um, obviously whatever I end up building here which I have got a bit of an idea about uh, means that people will be able to, to sit here and uh, and view it uh, and that's what I want to do a lot in this series just these these small sort of fake benches and things just to fill in gaps you know just just to really keep everywhere relevant and occupied with something so there's there's something in uh, in every area you know, see, so I don't want to end up with just large walkways uh, where where nothing is happening. <coughs> Excuse me, nothing is happening. Um, so that's my uh, that's my theory behind stuff like these fake benches. Now I've not done uh, I've not done the back here yet or the side here because I don't know quite what I'm doing around there. But I will get to that. And the other thing that I've I've done on the end here is I've kind of rigged up a a different looking information board. So this is this is quite simple. I've just put two monitors back here with the same picture on of the uh, the sheep, and and then I've just used the wood panels just to cover up the bits I didn't want showing. So you end up with the picture up there and then the information bit down here. Put one of these speakers in here with a small switch. That's kind of it's meant to represent a thing where you can. It's it's something that we see a lot in the UK here. Uh, where you push the button and it will talk to you so instead of having these things on a permanent loop which is really annoying you have to push the button and then it plays and it might be you know a minute's worth of talking and it's someone telling you about the animal so that's kind of what that's meant to represent I quite like this it's uh, it is the sort of thing that we we get here in the UK uh, I don't know if it happens elsewhere as well but um, yeah I, I quite like this it's, it's something a bit different and I, again I'm just I'm trying to customize everything trying to trying to make everything my own um, so that's what I've gone with there and I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with it um, so that's gonna be kind of it really for the uh, the sheep I think um, I I'm, I'm very happy with how this is uh, enclosures turn out if I zoom out I think that fills that gap really nicely and I love the, the different colored rock really makes it stand out um, so as you walk into the zoo here immediately your eye is drawn over by this tree and because the sheep mostly sit in this sheltered area here you see them straight away 
um, which I really like. I really like you being able to see the animals in the distance. It really kind of makes you think, right, I'm going straight over there. I want to have a look at the sheep. And then you come over and you can see them. I also like that you can see a bit of the backstage. You've got the door back there. I didn't cover it up completely um, because it's that's realistic. You uh, you know you often see the doors and things that the staff use, so I have no problem with that at all. Um, so yes, yeah, so there we go. That is my sheep enclosure. Let me know what you think. Um, I personally, I'm uh, I'm really happy with it. I think the sheep look really good in there. And. Uh, yeah, that's turned out better than I expected. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had fun. I hope I've inspired you to go and build your own sheep enclosure uh, or something else that's similar. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing next. Probably something in this area here. I've got a bit of an idea. And uh, I think that probably will be my next project because uh, it's an animal that I really want to get into the zoo. So until then, um, take care. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.